Hello, my hamster friends of the world. Um, I'm Rachel and I have hamsters. And today we're gonna talk about little Shirley and some health issues she's had lately and how I got to the bottom of them and how I hopefully have gotten her back on track and um, back to living a healthy, happy hamster life. <laughs> so this is little Shirley. And if you don't watch my videos normally, Shirley and her sister Laverne came to me in November of 2020. So it's now November, 2021. So I've had them for about a year. They started out as fosters for me and then I just fell in love with them. So now they are part of my hamster family. And uh, when they came to me, they were young looking, but full grown. So let's assume they were four to six months when I got them, uh, which would make them about a year and a half now. Um, so a year and a half for a dwarf hamster, you know, that's definitely late middle age. Um, you know, if not quite elderly, maybe it's elderly. It depends on the hamster. But so far, Shirley's been really healthy. I mean, she has bright eyes and soft fur, soft silky fur, you know, is active and very sweet. Um, I've never had a concern about Shirley up until the last few weeks. So starting about two months ago, I noticed that Shirley was losing fur around the bottom half of her body near her rear legs um, and under her belly a little bit. Uh, and you'll see it in this video. Um, it just was thinning. It wasn't totally bald, um, but otherwise she seemed healthy and happy. And um, I couldn't really tell if this was an, an elderly hamster thing or what was going on. But I made her an appointment with my vet just to make sure that there wasn't something I could be doing for her that I wasn't. Uh, so the vet took a look at her and said, you know, she looks healthy and happy and I don't see anything wrong with her. But um, the fur loss, you know, is a little concerning. It could be a hormone issue, um, but it could also be a protein issue. So she said, let's try increasing her protein and see if that helps. So at the time, Shirley was only eating or primarily eating Missouri lab blocks as her source of protein, which is pretty common in the US. A lot of people feed their hamsters a combo of Missouri lab blocks and Higgins seed mix. I also gave my hamsters um, occasionally a scrambled egg or some a freeze dried chicken cat treat um, from Pure Bites. And I decided, okay, well, I'm gonna start doing those more regularly. So I started making, giving her scrambled egg pretty much every day in addition to some chicken, um, just to see if I could get her to eat it. It was around this time too, I started noticing she wasn't eating her Missouri lab blocks. I would normally put them in little hides around her enclosure and I would see that they would get nibbled on. And when I went to check to see if they were gone, if she needed a new one, um, they were all still there and looked untouched. So that was a little unusual to me. I wasn't sure why she wasn't eating the lab box, but I figured, you know, hamsters taste change. Sometimes they're opinionated. And so I thought, well, maybe she just wants something different. You know, maybe she wants more eggs or chicken treats, whatever. So that is what I started giving her. Um, and it's around this time she started to decline kind of rapidly. Um, you can see in this video that her fur, <laughs> once the footage stops getting moved around, her fur starts to look a little less glossy. She looks kind of rugged. She lost more fur. You can see there's a bald spot near her hip there and her eyes are kind of sunken in. Um, she just wasn't looking good. Uh, she was not looking like her usual self and she wasn't as active. I felt like she wasn't out and about as much as she used to be. Uh, she definitely lost weight. You could tell just by picking her up that she was, it felt like she was just like a little feather. <laughs> so it was at this time that I started giving Shirley some soft foods, like the one you can see there. Um, I had been making soft foods for Laverne. Laverne is Shirley's sister who has had an abscess problem and is on antibiotics and anti-inflammatories, which she has to take with food. So I was making soft foods for Laverne to ensure that she actually ate them and didn't pouch them. And I just started giving those same soft foods to Shirley plus a few others. Uh, so here she's eating a green bean baby food. And then on the right is a blueberry Missouri lab block chia seed oatmeal mush. Um, and uh, she started eating them actually quite, I mean, she would clean the plate. So I would just feed her as much as she would eat and she would eat it. And so I didn't know what was going on with her and why she was losing weight, but I figured, all right, at least I know she's eating. So I'm just gonna keep giving her these soft foods and see if it helps.
So the vet also noticed that Shirley had lost weight. In fact, from her previous visit, she had lost 10 grams, which is a fair amount. That's like 20 to 25% of her body weight. Um, so she lost a lot of weight in a short period of time, a couple weeks. And, um, and you know, her fur loss was worse. And of course, yeah, she visually just did not look as good. Um, the vet said that this time, the thing that she noticed was that her top teeth were totally gone and her bottom teeth were overgrown. So this was keeping her from eating, from chewing, um, from eating the Missouri lab blocks, and of course, you know, from eating anything that involved <laughs> more than just licking baby food. So that did answer the question for me of why she was so excited about the baby food um, and why she wasn't eating her Missouri lab blocks. Uh, so the vet did trim her bottom teeth. Um, and if you don't know about hamsters or you've never had hamsters before, any rodent that is a gnawing ro rodent, a chewing rodent like hamsters or gerbils or, or mice or rats, uh, they need to chew on things uh, actively to grind down their teeth. If they don't do that, then uh, their teeth will become overgrown and they can grow, like the bottom teeth can grow into the top the top jawline. Um, it can also prevent them from eating like it did with Shirley. So with Shirley, because her top teeth were gone for some reason, um, her bottom teeth had become overgrown because they weren't being worn down by natural chewing and wear and tear. Uh, so for rodents who have these kinds of teeth, you can clip them because it, they don't uh, have pain in their teeth the same way, you know, maybe we would. Um, their teeth are meant to be worn down. And uh, so it is a simple thing. You just have to clip their teeth, but um, it is something you need to do frequently. So now Shirley will need to go to the vet about once a month to get her teeth clipped. So the interesting thing about this teeth problem is the next day, Laverne had an appointment for an unrelated issue. She, um, she's she been having an abscess issue, and I'll do a video about that, but if you watch my previous video, she's ongoing abscess issue. And uh, the vet noticed that on Laverne, she had the exact same problem with her top teeth, that her top teeth were basically gone. Um, she still has top teeth, uh, but they're just not as long, or maybe they've become very brittle and they break off. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with their top teeth or why this is happening, um, but whatever it is, they both now need teeth clippings um, about once a month. So <laughs> this is a new uh, added thing. I I'm very happy to now have a cause for why Shirley was losing weight and was looking so rugged. Um, you know, now I know I just need to feed her soft foods and um, and get her teeth clipped every once in a while. Um, I'm supposed to still encourage both of them to continue chewing, um, chewing apple sticks and whimsies, but I've noticed that basically both of them totally stop chewing. I mean, I give them chew, chew toys, but they just ignore them. Where in the past, they've they spend a lot of their time chewing, actually, um, especially during the day. I, they do this like sleepy chew thing where they get up in the mid morning and they just kind of close their eyes and chew and sort of have sleep. <laughs> I used to love that. But anyway, those days are seem to be over. Um, and we are now in this new phase of both Shirley and Laverne's um, <laughs> eating and chewing habits. <laughs> Uh, so, like I said, I'm very happy to know what's going on with them, but I still find it quite a mystery. Um, I'm not sure why this has happened to both of them. They're likely sisters. Um, they definitely came from the same situation, um, rescue situation. And it's possible they were, I think they were part of like a hamster hoarding, backyard breeding thing. So, you know, they were not bred for genetics, <laughs> um, unfortunately. So. It is definitely a genetic issue, and um, all I can do is just do the best I can to manage it and provide them with food that will, you know, keep them nourished and healthy as long as possible. Uh, if you have a hamster who has who's elderly or um, has teeth problems, uh, there is a recipe, Cheeks and Squeaks. They are um, an ethical breeder located in Southern California, and they've created a recipe for a soft food that they make with a mixture of of um, Missouri lab blocks and a bunch of other things. Um, and it's on their website. I will link to it down below in case you have a hamster and, and you're looking for a good recipe for soft foods. Um, one thing I like to do with Shirley and Laverne is I mix it up with different fruits or vegetables. Um, here she's eating a blueberry flavored, you know, hamster mush. And then she also has green beans, baby food. 
um, just to give her a variety. Uh, because one thing you'll notice with hamsters is they don't like eating the same thing every day. They like variety. Um, so you do kind of have to mix it up for them a bit. Uh, you, you can also feed your hamsters baby foods. And the one thing to watch out for baby food. So hamsters can get an upset stomach from things like onions and garlic and also acidic items like tomatoes and citrus fruits. So when you get baby foods, you just want to make sure that they are, um, they don't have those things in them. Typically baby foods don't because that's similar to babies. Babies don't typically eat onion flavored foods or or citrusy fruits, foods. So um, anything that is baby food is typically safe for a hamster, but just read the ingredients. Um, I've been feeding my hamsters. There's a sweet potato one they really like. Uh, there's a green beans one. I recently got them a turkey dinner one, which is turkey, sweet potato, beet. Um, yeah, I think that might be it. Um, and they love that one. That's my little Thanksgiving meal <laughs> for them. I also give them little bits of banana and scrambled eggs. Um, I just try to keep it interesting and whatever I can think of that's soft and provides them with a wide nutritional palette. I try to, um, to feed them that. So uh, hopefully they're enjoying that and I have become a full-time hamster chef <laughs> in all of my free time. <laughs> One thing I haven't figured out yet is why exactly this tooth problem has happened with them. Um, I know that in dogs and in Syrian hamsters, when they have a shortened snout, they can lose their, they can have teeth dental problems, brittle teeth or teeth that fall out. Um, I don't know if that's something that can happen with a dwarf hamster. Um, so that's something I need to, I've been trying to look into and I've been reading hamster forums to try to figure out if that is a thing dwarf hamsters can get. Um, if you know anything about this, definitely leave me a comment below. Um, or if you've had an issue with your dwarf hamsters, um, I would love to hear from, from all of you out there. I'm very interested in why this happens. Um, you know, I know it's a genetic issue, but past that, I'm kind of unsure if, um, yeah, if this is common in dwarf hamsters or fairly uncommon. My vet seemed surprised, but I don't know, you know, um, I, I don't know what her reasoning is. You know, maybe she's never seen that before, but I don't know how many dwarf hamsters she typically sees. So, you know, who knows? Uh, but I am trying to get to the bottom of that. I think the moral of the story for me is really that, um, you know, these hamsters were not bred with their well-being or health in mind. And this is a great reason to support ethical breeders. If you want to buy a hamster, please buy one from um, a breeder that is part of the hamster association where you live. Um, hamsters associations ensure that breeders are following certain guidelines and putting the animal welfare and health first. Um, you know, buying a hamster from a backyard breeder, someone who is not registered, um, or doing it casually, or even a pet store, a rodent mill, these types of places are really, they're just trying to pump out little baby hamsters. They're not looking out for hamster health first. And the unfortunate part for both you as the human, you know, and for the hamster, they have to go through suffering and pain because of these genetic issues. And it's also very expensive. I mean, I'll be honest, I've spent a lot of money on my hamsters in the last few months. Um, and I'm happy to do it. And my goal is that they live happy and healthy lives. But it is at an expense of both their well-being and and my income, <laughs> and um, and also me. I mean, it's really hard to watch your hamster not be healthy and happy and not have them be themselves. It's very sad. So you know, I think this is, I think reinforce the idea that that hamsters that are in rescues really do need homes to take care of them, um, because they have all sorts of possible issues they could run into in their um, with their health. But also that that. We want to keep supporting those people who are trying to make things better and um, trying to make sure that, you know, hamsters are great pets, but we don't want them to suffer <laughs> unnecessarily. So um, please think adoption first um, and then support ethical breeders, you know, either or just do one of those things. I will link down below to um, some lists of both rescues and ethical breeders. If you're looking for a hamster 
you can check pet finder in the united states and it'll show you hamsters who are in small animal rescues or at humane societies um, there are a surprisingly large number of hamsters who need and are constantly looking for homes um, so there's a lot of opportunity out there if you want to help out a hamster in need like laverne or shirley um <laughs> little shirley's so sweet i love her little hands <laughs> she's so funny um, anyway, so I hope this video has been helpful to all of you out there um, and if nothing else just interesting I think this is part of the, the journey of having hamsters um, There's so much we have yet to learn about them and understand about them um, but Yeah, please leave me a comment if this is something you've gone through with your hamsters if they've had dental problems um, and how you dealt with it uh, I would love to, to hear from all of you and um, Yeah, as always, thank you for joining me and I hope to see you in my next video